Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this one, by popular demand, we are going to be talking about investment. We're kind of returning back to our series about the casting process. This whole product and everything around this product, uh, the mixing, vacuuming, all that stuff, is arguably one of the toughest things that we see uh, with people who want to start their own casting and actually for professional casting houses as well. We've had a number of comments and heard some of your guys' horror stories about your interactions with casting houses trying to cast 3D prints. It seems pretty clear that most of the established casting houses are just not prepared for this increasingly popular wave of 3D printing and jewelry making. Now, seemingly here in Canada, there's just almost no initiative for these casting houses to innovate at all. Uh, everyone that we've contacted, they just flat out will not do it, or they expect you to go and buy an ecosystem printer like uh, Envision Tech uh, or something like that, where the resin has been calibrated to the point where you know it works just like wax, but it costs a huge amount. And of course, there's the printer as well, which can get up to about $50,000, which is just out of the reach of the vast majority of people. So if you're an established casting house or a jewelry store doing your own work on site, uh, and you're watching these videos to try and get caught up and start to do 3D printing and casting on your own, good on you. But if you're a traditional studio and you're just gonna stick with wax and you're gonna just ride it out, you are gonna be left behind. So let's get into the video and talk a little bit about the investment aspect of this. In a later video, we will discuss burnout. There's a bit of a difference between wax and resins, but we're just gonna focus on this because there is a lot to cover with investment on its own and it can get very confusing. So before we get into those specific products that exist, let's talk about what investment actually is. This is gonna get a little bit technical, so bear with me, it just it follow along. It will be relevant later on. Investment can be most commonly grouped into two categories. And these are these categories are based off of basically what the, ingre the main ingredient is in the binder. So calcium sulfate, which is a typical gypsum bonded investment, and phosphate bonded investments, which are typically used in the dental industry for very rapid burnouts uh, and casting with platinum. They're very spe specific. If you are doing either of those things, then you don't really need to be shopping around for investment because you only really have one choice. The main difference between the two is that the phosphate bonded ones require an, a special additive and are much more expensive. I don't know the exact costs off the top of my head. We'll put them up here somewhere, but uh, they are incredibly diverse. Now the difference though, is that phosphate bonded can handle the high temps like platinum and titanium whereas gypsum bonded just can't handle that. It breaks down when you get closer to those temperatures. The basic ingredients of investment are pretty simple. It isn't just dug up somewhere, uh, put into a box and shipped to you at an exorbitant markup or anything like that. Each component goes through a mill, which ensures that the minerals are all the right grain size so that you get a consistent finish on all of your pieces. You'll notice that there's no, you know, unlike sand casting where you might see a grain structure, there is none of that when you're doing lost wax casting with investment. So the main mineral in a product such as Plasticast or Optima Prestige is gypsum, which is also known as plaster of Paris. Uh, this is the main ingredient. It can be used in numerous things like uh, fertilizer, cement filler, paper, textiles, arts and crafts. You've probably used it at some point in your life. It's very, very common mineral. The next ingredient is quartz, also known as silica. It has been crushed and milled just like the gypsum. And what silica does is it helps strengthen the investment overall during the high heat process. The next ingredient is called cristobalite. Forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that right. I don't know how to say that. Um, <clears throat> it is another form of silica. And what this does is it actually helps with the thermal expansion properties while it's in the kiln. And uh, that's about it. Honestly, that's the main stuff. However, uh, companies can choose to do additives, such as reducing agents, uh, which basically reduces the amount of oxygen in the kiln and during the, um, the casting process. Basically, what that means is that the metal, after you've poured it in, won't have as much oxidation on it because there just wasn't any oxygen in the flask to begin with. 
The next one is wedding agents. Basically, while you're mixing the investment, wedding agents can improve how well the mix flows and gets into all those details of your model. Then there's defoaming agents, which effectively inhibit the production of bubbles in the mix. Um, if you've ever had a, a, a cast where bubbles just, you know, they stuck to your piece, you can just pick them off, but it's annoying nonetheless, and it can ruin some details. And lastly would be fibers, but you'll mostly find those in really high-end uh, specific ones. But think of, uh, you know, like cement or fiberglass. If you add the fibers into it, the fibers are able to lock together and it just increases the strength overall of the, the flask. So with that all said, uh, the exact composition and amounts are of very little consequence uh, because unless you're making your own, it really doesn't matter. Uh, Ransom and Randolph and Certus, uh, among others, have already done all the research and development on what ratios and weights are good for what uh, purpose. So you'll notice that I have two different investments here. Um, something that we learned when we were trying to get our hands on this one, the Optima Prestige from Certus, uh, we discovered that investments are very region locked. Um, and what I mean by that is that if you're in China or Asia in general, uh, you're probably not going to be getting Ransom and Randolph because it's manufactured in the Midwest, in Ohio specifically. Uh, to ship a 44 pound box is expensive and distance does matter. So you're probably going to be going with a different brand because this mineral, the gypsum that we've talked about before and silica are so common, you can mine it pretty much anywhere on earth. Uh, obviously there are sp spots that are better than others, but it's very worldwide found. So you're gonna be going with certain brands based on where you live. Certus is a company that I wasn't able to find the actual manufacturing location of, uh, but they are headquartered in Turkey. So that's still quite a distance from where I am. I suspect they have multiple manufacturers uh, all over the place, depending on where you are. Uh, one that we were not able to get at all because it just doesn't have a market presence here in North America is a company called Gold Star. And that's because it's manufactured in the UK, Brazil, and China, and India. And there's just no reason to be shipping very similar project, products that far. A little bit of kind of insider information, I guess, um, from my supplier. R&R and Certus actually lowered the overall weight of their boxes from 50 pounds to 44 pounds. If you're wondering why, that's kind of an odd number. Uh, the reason for it is actually because of shipping itself. So companies like FedEx, UPS, um, DHL, whoever, um, they all have conveyor systems and those systems have weight limits. So over 50 pounds, each box has to be moved by hand to the pallet. And that is very expensive. It adds a much larger shipping cost. And the easier way was just to slightly lower the cost of the box, take out a few pounds, and they can be put on the belt. Saves a heap of money in the long run. So as I mentioned before, R&R is kind of our go-to brand. We've been using it for a very long time. It's easy for us to get, it's affordable. We just run down to Toronto and we pick up a box. Um, R&R has a whole lineup. They don't just make um, jewelry investment. They make uh, tons of things from dental specific uh, investments to large scale bronze sculpture, uh, ceramic shell, glass casting, solid block investment casting. They've got a whole wide range of products and they're all based around basically the same principle, the gypsum bonded or phosphate bonded type of product. But of their jewelry lineup, they do have a few, which I'll explain to you in brief what they mean. There is one called Advantage. This one is designed for casting low temp metals such as silver, bronze, and brass. It's advertised as being very, very easy to work with and also very affordable. So if your ratios aren't perfect, uh, it's probably gonna give you a little bit of leeway, um, but they don't specify whether or not it's good for casting with resins. So I would just assume if they don't, actually mention specifically that it's good for 3D prints, just don't use it. The next one in line is called Astro Vest. And this one they say is a just a gypsum bonded um, investment, unlike the phosphate ones. Uh, this one is designed for casting stainless and, and platinum. So I'm not really sure how that works because it has to be able to handle much higher heat. Uh, I don't really use it, I don't know, but 
that's what they say it's for. So let's just go with that. <clears throat> Next in line is Solitaire. Solitaire is designed for specifically stone in place casting. And this one I do not recommend you ever use with 3D printing because uh, it requires a much lower uh, firing temperature. I believe it's at 1,160 Fahrenheit. Um, you'd wanna use this because when you put stones in place, the stones can be temperature sensitive. The lower, the better. Obviously just don't heat up stones if you can. Um, and you really only, only wanna do that with specific kinds like diamonds, sapphires, and I think rubies, but don't quote me on that one. <clears throat> then they have Ultravest and Ultravest Max. These ones are very general use investments. They're designed for mostly with wax, but we actually started with Ultravest casting some 3D prints, so it can be used, but I would use that information with caution. Try it first. Uh, if you can just get you know a little bag of it or something from someone that you know, it would be worth it before you buy a whole 44 pound box. And then of course, there's our favorite one, Plasticast which is specifically designed for working with wax plastics or just plastics. And this is the one we've just transitioned to. We use it for everything, including waxes. It's a great overall material. I really like it. And then you'll also notice that they have PT versions. This one is the phosphate bonded one. It's basically the same. It's just, you have an additive bottle that goes with this box. And uh, the price is about, four times as much, and it's designed for specifically working with platinums, palladium, stainless, titanium, the really high heat stuff. So if you plan on casting yourself, there are more than a few factors that you need to think of in your own process before you can actually pick one of those investments. The first thing that you need to consider is what is the model made of? Is it made of wax? Is it made of organic material? Is it a 3D print? What kind of resin is it overall? There's a lot of things to consider. The second factor is what kind of metal are you going to be casting mostly? Um, are you gonna be working with just little silver, gold, platinum? Obviously, we already talked about that. That requires a specific kind. Uh, are you doing large bronzes? There's a lot to consider with that as well. And then lastly, almost kind of like a minor little footnote, are you gonna be doing anything like stone in place? Because that does affect the decision overall. So just to summarize that list real quick, um, what material are you going to be casting? What metal are you gonna be casting it in? And are there any specific factors that you need to consider like stone in place or organic material? So let's apply all this knowledge that we have just learned. Um, let's go through a hypothetical casting scenario. So let's say that you want to cast these 3D models. These have been printed in Apply Labs Castable Cyan. We've had really good results with this stuff, working with uh, very thin models, even thinner, and very thick as well. So because this is a resin and it doesn't list that it has any wax content whatsoever, um, it's safe to assume that we need to be using Plasticast or Optima Prestige, which is specifically designed for casting plastics or wax plastics. This design doesn't swing too far to too heavy or too light. So we're just gonna use the middle mixing ratio, which we actually have on our cheat sheet on the wall, which is also for sale. When the models are really light like this, it can be advantageous to mix the ratio a little bit more water heavy, which is going to increase how well the investment flows into all the details and because it's thinner, it doesn't require as much strength as it might for something heavy like this with these big thick corners. When you mix it a little bit more investment heavy with less water, then you do get a little bit more stronger of a mix. That stronger, thicker mix is then able to better resist some of the thermal expansion involved with casting with plastics. But let's say we didn't print these in Apply Labs. Let's say we printed something with, with a much higher wax content, um, a resin such as Bluecast X1, which is actually touted as being meltable, um, or Resinworks 400. Uh, stay tuned for both of those. We have both of them on the way. We will be doing reviews for them as soon as this chip shortage is over. <clears throat> if anyone at Prusa is watching this, I really do want my SL1S printer upgrade. It has been 
more than a month that the that shipping time has slipped. I really want that. We need videos. Anyway, depending on the wax content of the resin being used, for resins like that, you may be able to get away with a more general use investment, such as um, UltraVest, UltraVest Max. Uh, I'm not sure what the, the Certus option is, but you get the gist. However, if you, if you want my two cents on the matter, um, our situation is very atypical. Typically what you do is you find an investment or a resin that, or and or a resin that you like, and you just stick with it. Not everyone out there is going to be trying 13, 16 different castable resins. It's just not really feasible. You get a resin you like, you get an investment you like, you know they work well together, and you get good products from it. So what I'm trying to say is, even if I was using a higher wax content resin, I'm still gonna stick with Plasticast, even if it might still work with something like UltraVest. So to give the larger casting houses a little bit of a break here, I do understand. Um, I, as a small business owner, am much more flexible than someone who has to cast, you know, we're talking hundreds of pounds of investment all at once for large companies with orders in the thousands. I understand, especially when it does require more of a process change. Switching to a different process and product lineup and everything really, um, for a relatively small amount of business isn't something that many businesses are willing to do. It just doesn't make a whole lot of financial sense. And that's totally understandable. So if you've stayed this long, thank you very much for watching because <laughs> now you know a little bit more about what investment is, some of the factors that you need to think of when you're picking your own investment, and some of the factors that go into deciding what ratio to use. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about the burnout cycle which very important and it definitely gets a little bit more tricky. It's not quite as simple as follow the instructions as you really should be doing for the investments. And if you want to make your life a little bit easier, down in our new merch bar down here, we have a cheat sheet <laughs> that we put together quite a while ago. Um, I have a really big one on, up on my wall. Uh, it's got all of the mixing ratios, so I never have to remember them, all the weights. I just have to look up at my sheet and I know exactly what I need to do. So it's just that easy. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions down in the comments section below or on Instagram, whatever is best for you, and we'll be able to help you out. So I will see you guys in the next video.